Growing up with PKU, I, you obviously have to be self-disciplined and I think that's really helped me with my Pal and Zeke now because I've learned how to make healthy food choices. Before Pal and Zeke, my fee tolerance was 325 milligrams of fee a day. And now with Pal and Zeke, I'm at 40 grams of protein a day and we see it most likely increasing still. I felt the transition was easier because I didn't have to like get my how much fee app and look everything up and have to document everything. I could look at the label. It made my life easier. I could honestly pick up the food at the grocery store, look at the label and be like, oh, I can actually eat this in my tolerance now. Cool, throw it in the cart. <laughs>the medication is uh, called phenylalanine ammonia lyase, which is an enzyme that breaks down phenylalanine in a different way than phenylalanine hydroxylase. It's found in plants, and the scientists have engineered that plant enzyme to try to make it safe to use in humans. So we're actually putting a plant enzyme into humans that breaks down phenylalanine in a different way than, P than phenylalanine hydroxylase. If your fee levels go down when you use Palenzeek, that's great, but you still need to make sure you're getting extra tyrosine because your body doesn't make, you're, you're not making tyrosine. It's not perfect. So people that take Palenzeek know that you have to start at a very low dose and very gradually build up to try to build up some immune tolerance so your body doesn't have an allergic reaction to it. I had to take some pre-meds. You have to take a antihistamine, an allergy pill, and Tylenol or Advil. And I did that, you have to do it about 30 minutes before. Because Palenzeek is made from a foreign protein, a protein that's not normal in your body, there is always gonna be potential to have an allergic response to it. Uh, and because of that, most when we start treating people with Palenzeek, we usually give them a, an EpiPen to if in case they have an emergency, again, very, very, very rare. But if it were to happen, we want our patients to be safe. I started eating new foods. I dropped low protein pasta altogether and started eating whole wheat, whole grain pasta. And my life and my shopping bill has changed <laughs> drastically. With such a high increase in food, it is like learning how to eat all over again. You're trying to figure out how much food you can have in a day, what food can fit in that, what amounts you can eat. It's a whole, it's like starting back all over again. But again, if you have the self-discipline and you're willing to stick it out, you're gonna enjoy it. And so I say come in, have a conversation, learn what Palenzeek is, see if it fits your lifestyle, if you're okay with needles, that's a big one for lots of people, see if this will work for you. Many times, We'll just present the information and we'll just say, do you think this is the best time in your life for this? Do you think this is something that you can handle? Are you going to be able to refrigerate this? Are you gonna be able to take an injection every single day? And for most of the patients that come in to hear about it, it works, but for a few, they have decided this is not a good time in their life. It's not that they're not interested. Life before Palenzeek, it was, Interesting. You know, none of my friends would ever point out like, oh, she's obviously not eating the food because she can't eat it. My friends never would point that out, but you knew when someone new came into the group or something, because then I'd have to give them the whole spiel about, I have a rare genetic disorder that, and I would just confuse them. But now I no longer have to do that. I feel less different. I feel more, I don't want to say normal, but I feel like a regular person.